Hello everyone, my name is Norman and I broke my 3D printer. To be more precise, I actually just broke the sensor in front of the nozzle, which measures the temperature. Basically, my printer will never know which temperature is in the front, which makes it unable to print. Don't ask how it happened, don't ask why it happened, it just did. And let's just say it's not the proudest moment in my life. <laughs> However, I already, I already got spare parts. Um, I just I bought an entire extruder, okay? We will talk more about that later. First, before we start fixing the printer, let me address the elephant in the room. That box basically came out of nowhere, right? Well, you haven't seen a video about that because um, actually I built that box between Christmas and New Year's Eve. And you know guys, that's actually the period where you eat like I just ate so much that day that I didn't feel like recording when I built that box and well, I ended up building that box without touching a camera. I actually made that box because it should help improving the quality of the prints. It keeps the air around the printer more at a constant um, temperature. Little bonus is it will save a little bit of the noise, not much, but it will help. That's actually two good reasons to have to build an enclosure around your printer. So now that we have that cleared out, um, let me explain to you why I actually got an entire extruder when just that tiny little sensor here broke. The reason is actually because, well, number one, this one here um, has a quick release system, which I haven't figured out yet. The other one is a little bit harder to handle because it doesn't have this thing here. So when you want to change the filaments, it gets kind of annoying. Also, this thing has a huge heat sink, which is also going to help. But the biggest reason actually is that this motor here is going to help me. The main reason is that the y-axis, I believe it's the y-axis, um, of that printer is actually, I don't know, it's, it's kind of stuck. Um, the motor is bad, let's call it that way. <laughs> the motor doesn't run as smoothly as it should. I thought, why don't I just get an, a replacement motor and replace that motor? Let's try to actually attach everything to my existing build. I don't even know if this fits, but it should because it looks exactly the same. Let's just have a look at... Actually, that thing here is not finished. You can see um, the door doesn't even have a closing mechanism. That's because I wanted to add some magnets. You know, I need to print the magnet holder and all that stuff. So there's still a little bit of work to do at that enclosure, which is great because then you also get to see something about me building this stuff. I started by taking off the cooling fan and I used a metal container just to store all the small parts and screws so that nothing gets lost um, during the building process. I quickly realized that I needed to take off some screws at the bottom of the extruder so I just raised the z-axis to have full access and then I was finally able to remove the extruder. The next step was undoing the cable management. Every time it feels like so much work to undo and redo the job, but that's the price we pay for neat looking setups. By the way, this thing which is holding the cable is one of the first prints I designed by myself. It's simple yet effective. If I would design that same thing today, it probably would end up way more complex with a hinge and magnet or something. Not because it's better, but because it's totally over-engineered and I somehow seem to find joy in that. You can now barely see what I'm doing, but neither could I, to be honest. <laughs> Basically, I tried to remove the correct cables without touching the, the, the wrong cables. Um, the cables which need to stay in place. At this step it's very important not to undo something you don't want to change in the first place because the more careful you are now the less um, work you'll have to do later. Once I got rid of the cables which I didn't want to use anymore it's, it was time to install the new extruder. Here I immediately realized that this was not going to work. The, the quick release which I mentioned earlier didn't fit that kind of sucked, but I had no other choice in using the old um, extruder. 
So I just replaced the broken thermistor and also salvaged the heatsink I was talking about earlier. All said and done and you probably already know what's next. Wiring back up. I actually had to google the manual because I forgot where to put the wires and I didn't have the manual, the original manual which came with the printer anymore. Yeah, you want some advice? Take some pictures of stuff when you disassemble them. I always forget that, but it might save you some trouble later when reassembling. Well, once I got all the cables attached, I made a quick test run. Turned out to having everything working, so it was ready to get some cable management. You'll notice that I didn't sleeve the front half of the cables. That's because I was actually planning on printing some flexible cable channels. Well, I totally forgot about that until now when I'm actually doing these voiceovers here. <laughs> so, okay, thermistors set and done, extruder working. Now it was time to replace the faulty motor at the Y-axis. The new motor still had that infamous quick release attached and um, <laughs> I accidentally disassembled the entire motor because I thought it'd be a good idea to just unscrew the first screws I found on the motor. Turned out the right screws were just up front. Yeah, don't judge me. Well, I put all the parts back together and I removed the old motor and put in the new motor. Easy. And finally, we can close that lid at the back again to hide all these messy cables. Let's talk about this bad boy, okay? Well, that box is actually pretty, pretty nice, I guess. Um, that stuff which is which I use is called hobby glass. I don't know if you know it. It's a very, very soft material, but you know, um, it looks great and also it's very, very transparent. Um, but the problem is, you hear it, here especially, it's just like a drum, you know? So every time a motor moves on that printer, vibration is going to be transferred onto that box and and more or less be like boosted by that entire enclosure you know because it's just a, a, a huge resonant body what I plan on doing is adding one of those on each side or maybe at the top two like that wait a second see I got plenty I got plenty of them maybe we are just going to add two at the top and two at each side hopefully it's going to reduce the vibration a little bit what I wanted to do is... Where is it? Got it! I wanted to add these rubber pads, so they are... I don't know if you can see it on camera. But there are many, many little rubber um, self-adhesive, um, I don't know, pads. And I wanted to add, I think, one at the middle at least, or two, I don't know. Um, some of them along these bars so that they will just touch the glass and hopefully um, keep it from resonating and vibrating. I actually got these planks pre-cut at the hardware store. They offer that as a free service and you can cut pretty much any size. The problem with that cheap construction timber is that it chips a lot when you don't take your time whilst, while sawing. So um, well here you can see me cleaning up the sloppiness of that service worker. I didn't want to take off the acrylic glass planes, that's why I decided to use wood glue instead of screws to hold the planks in place. Since they didn't need to hold much weight, wood glue would be more than enough anyway. I actually also repeated that step for all the other parts or the other planks which needed to be installed. Of course I did that off camera because I'm lazy. Sorry. As you can see that enclosure is a very very tight fit, I had to leave out a plank at one side to give the printer enough clearance to move around. I even had to move up the z-axis to be able to pivot the frame around the printer. So that's a very very close and snug fit. But it worked.
all tidied up, built up. Actually, this thing is ready to do a test print uh, after calibration at least. Let me just explain to you um, what we are going to print. We are going to print um, this thing. It's a Raspberry Pi. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe not, I don't know. But it's basically a mini computer. And with the right software installed, you can actually control that printer with that mini computer wirelessly. Which means that when, whenever I have something to transfer, like a G-code file, Onto the printer, I don't need to um, use that SD card, which I have been using before. I can just wirelessly transmit that over to that Raspberry Pi. Also a good thing is that actually, um, wait a second, I'm just going to get myself a chip. You can see that this thing actually has something attached, which is a camera. The software, which is called Octoprint, by the way, um, has a special timeless mode, which allows you to do um, special time lapses with uh, while printing. I attached that camera here, I bought that, that's just like seven euros, very, very cheap, low quality, but I just bought this to try it out. Maybe one day I'll get a better one, but until then, I will be using this camera here. Actually, it's a lot slimmer and smaller, but I printed a small enclosure already before I broke my um, thermistor. So the first test print, which we are going to do is um, a small attachment mount which allows us to mount that camera somewhere at the top or I don't know yet exactly where so that um, you know it has a great viewing angle on the printing bed which will well hopefully result in great time lapses until then maybe I can just use that okay my my battery just died what I said is um, where have I been well, maybe I think for a makeshift attachment at the top, I can just, you know, use some tape and tape that camera directly on the glass because it's transparent, you know. So um, we can we can maybe already shoot a, a bird's view time lapse. Also, um, you, you notice that this cable, which came with the camera itself, is very very short. I actually I actually ordered a new cable, which is supposed to be about a meter long. And that's that's amazing, right? We have a little bit more room to play with, and that's that's exactly what we need. The bad thing about this Raspberry Box is actually that you need to disassemble everything just to plug in one single um, flex band cable whatsoever. I'll be just doing this off camera. Use some tape to stick that camera, the small camera, onto the top, and then we'll calibrate, and then hopefully we'll have a time lapse of printing that attachment so that we can have better time lapses of other prints which will be up and coming. Wow, that was a lot of nonsense. Let's go. As you can see, you can see nothing. Apart from the horrible quality and resolution, also the viewing angles just isn't right. So I decided to mount the camera at the side of the door to provide a nicer viewing angle. Still a crappy quality though. This, what we are printing right now is actually, um, it's going to be two mounts for two little magnets to keep that door shut. While I'm showing you how a shut door looks like, you, you probably notice that this thing is pretty, pretty wobbly, right? So it's, it's moving around and that's, that's, that's not cool, okay? I happen to find these things here in the, the hardware store and these are actually just like square tubes but in a U shape so I don't know how they're called they just fit perfectly here on the door and will reduce the wobbling significantly so last thing I gotta do is cut it down so that you know it fits the length because I don't want to have these this here in the back right <laughs> yeah this it's just an easy cut because it's just aluminum which is great so I'm just going to do this and I'll be right back here a demonstration how quick and easy that aluminum is cut. It's a very pleasant material to work with. I just used some glue to stick it to the door. I also used the same glue to stick the little mounts by the magnets to the door, but for the magnets themselves, I needed something stronger. I just put a ton of double component epoxy on them. Unfortunately, I did that off camera. Anyway, this turned out to be working perfectly. Okay guys, here we are. 
done. That box is finished. I think it, it closed very nicely. I think it turned out very, very well. I think even better than I expected. I, I, was, I was actually afraid of having like a huge, huge box in my room like an ugly thing which is which which just had a heavy weight well this thing is actually pretty lightweight um, from its appearance um, actually also from its actual weight actually I also already made a test print so um, this is the test print and as you can see or not see while that camera is trying to focus let me explain why the thing is a suitable test print for the box Especially when having large layers, the prints tend to bend when cooling too quickly. With this print, I experienced zero bending, despite having layers of up to 18 centimeters in width. Okay, so you can see here, the print quality still sucks, but I think that's due to the filament having soaked in humidity because it's very, very old. So I hope that this edge here in the next print, by the way, this is a stand for a PlayStation 4 Pro um, for a friend, I hope that with the new filaments, um, uh, the edges will turn out a little bit nicer. And people, why do they text me while I'm recording? That being said, thanks for watching, thanks for checking out that video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. Um, if you made it to here, I think you enjoyed it. Or you're just a friend of mine and you thought it would be nice to watch the entire video. However, see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.